Joining us today is Andrew Barger, Director Industry Policy, Queensland Resources Council, who will be speaking at IIR's Mining the ISA 2010 conference, which takes place on the 16th to 17th of November in Mount Isa. Hello, Andrew. Thanks for joining us today. No worries. First of all, what's the broad outlook for resources development in Queensland, um, and in particular around Mount Isa? Look, the, it, it's a bit of a, a mixed picture in, in Queensland and, and Mount Isa at the moment. You've got some uncertainties at the, the federal level, um, and they cut both ways. So we've got debates starting to ramp up again around royalty regimes and, and tax rates. Um, there'll be considerations from Canberra about a, a carbon price, and, and both of those issues will, will bite hard in Queensland and particularly around Mount Isa. But I guess on the other side of the coin, at the federal level, we've got um, part of the, the Henry tax review process talked about um, exploration tax credits or a flow-through shares scheme, which would be really beneficial for Queensland. So you've got some uncertainties at the federal level, um, but in terms of the fundamentals for, for Queensland and, and Mount Isa, the medium-term demand for the commodities that we produce looks strong. We've got just had Abair come out with some price increases for um, a range of Queensland commodities. So, you know, hard to, the, the crystal ball's a bit murky, but you'd, on balance you'd have to say that uh, it looks positive. And how does Mount Isa rate as a prospective mining region in comparison to other regions both in Queensland and in other states? Look, Mount Isa, the, the broader region around Mount Isa, stacks up as a, a, against pretty much anywhere else in the world. It's it's an incredible province in terms of its geology. Um, and and uh, it's, it's unusual in that for such a rich, plentiful area, it, we still don't really know what, everything about what's there. So its potential is still a little bit unknown. We've got new exploration techniques being rolled out, new technologies, um, and they're already finding commodities that we didn't know about five years ago. So, look, it's just based on what we know is in the ground at the moment. It's an incredibly, um, it's an incredibly prospective region, um, and based on what's likely to come from the exploration programs that are on the ground at the moment, that that those prospects are likely to only get brighter. What role does the Queensland Resources Council play in developing sustainable resources expansion all across the Carpent area? I guess as our role as, as a peak industry body is to act as an advocate for the industry's collective interests. So um, two of the, the issues that have been perennial for the greater Mount Isa region right across to the coast have been uh, access to transport. So the ability, once you've mined something, to get that onto a ship and exported to your markets and, and uh, access to competitively priced energy. Um, a lot of the, the mining and processing that's done in the region is fairly energy intensive and um, the region's ability to access new sources of energy for new mines or new projects has always been a, a bit of a constraint on growth. Um, we've been doing a lot of work with the Queensland Government uh, around the region's energy prospects and uh, we're at a really interesting place at the moment where there's there's a couple of different possibilities. There's the, the chance of a transmission line coming across from the coast. There's the possibility of CS Energy reinvesting in their Micah Creek power station and there's the, the possibility that the, um, the owners of the, the existing gas pipeline might also look at investing. So um, between those three prospects, for energy supply, you've got some really exciting opportunities for new projects in the region. What would QRC hope to see happen on the ground in North Queensland over the next 12 to 18 months? Look, if, if we had our wish list, obviously we'd like to see some of those prospects turn into projects, so we'd like to see some major investment decisions made around some of the, the projects that are moving through those, those processes now. I guess the other side of that coin is the exploration that we're seeing on the ground, the, the new science being applied in the field, see some of that start to generate results, so we start to see new prospects coming through. Um, we've already got a, a portfolio of new commodities 
on the ground. It would be great to see those projects advancing into production. Um, the other thing that would be terrific for the region as a whole would be the um, if a commitment was made to the, the transmission line because that potentially opens up the region for not just a supply of energy but also sending energy back into the national grid. So there's some really good prospects in the, the region for renewable energy as well as traditional sources of energy. So it'd be a it'd be a really nice solution if the in meeting the the resource sector's demand for energy growth, you could trigger um, an infrastructure project that would enable renewable energy to follow in the footsteps and start actually sending electricity back down the wires to the coast. You're speaking at IIR's Mine in the Isa 2010 conference, which takes place on the 16th to 17th of November 2010 in Mount Isa. What will, you, will, what will your key messages be at the event? I guess the key messages that I'd, I'd look to emphasise are the the fact that the region's sort of poised on on the cusp of um, some really powerful growth prospects at the moment, um, because of some of the new projects that are coming through that are delivering major volume growth to the the rail corridor. There's some prospects that that uh, QR are going to be able to invest in that um, that corridor and deliver. Uh, a much more reliable service which will be to the benefit of everyone. The other prospect I think is that competition that's running at the moment to to be the preferred supplier of energy to the region and depending on what happens there, again there should be some prospects for growth for the, the new projects that are coming through that development pipeline. Um, so the, the combination of both of those traditional infrastructure bottlenecks being uncorked and the pipeline of, of projects that's coming through from the exploration pro projects paints a fairly rosy picture for the region, I think. So I guess I'll be trying to call out the, the connections between all those different activities. Andrew Barger, many thanks for your time today. No worries at all.